friend on the way. I'm Melbourne Finney and I used to be a regular visitor to the Golden Garter. It was much cheaper there than going into Manchester and we saw some wonderful turns like Tommy Trinder. Memories of the Golden Garters have been fantastic over the years. I saw three degrees, lots of other bands. One of the best places you could ever go to. It's a shame we haven't got any more places like that. Irene, Paul Dan and his wife. He was on the door at the Golden Garter for a long time. Right. And his brother, Barry, and his other brother, Alan, they were all there. And his sister, Maureen, was in the chaos. And it was such a wonderful time. Mm. Favourite act was there was uh, Cannon and Ball. Cannon and Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Hiya. My name's Kathleen Donnelly, and I worked in the Golden Garter for a long time with Rose and everybody else. And my favourite memory is one night it was my birthday. And Dave, what's his second name, Rose, said to me that I, I can go up on the dance floor and dance. So I did, dancing with everybody. And the next minute, Derek Sutton come and said to me, what are you doing, you're suspended, and sent me home. <laughs> but my brother, John Donnelly, who everybody knew, he was ill at the time, he was in bed ill, and I went home and told him. And the next day, he phoned Derek Sutton and he said to him, you get my sister back there or else you're dead. <laughs> and the next minute, I got a phone call and he said, uh, you better come back tonight. You've been reinstated. You've been reinstated. You've been reinstated. Remember that, Rob? You liked that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Keith. Uh, I used to go to the garden myself as a kid when I was about 15, 16. A couple of friends of mine were pop collectors there. So I, I took advantage of all the free tickets that we used to give out. Uh, had some really good nights there. Pity is still not around. It's Ian McGowan here, you'll recognise me. Uh, uh, I'm the stage manager, or was the stage manager of the Golden Garden. It's very good to be here with all the boys and girls. Tommy was the best. Mr. Cooper was the best with me. He was, he was the best friend of mine as well. So. He was good. He was good. I could tell. I could tell lots of jokes and lots of stories about Tommy. But there were others. There was lots of others. There was Cannon and Ball, and there was Les Dawson. And so from the Cornish men, it's me, and Alan, Stephen. and oh, and Steve, Stephen Mr. Carlton in. has arrived. <laughs> Top boy. Somebody else has jumped in on it. That's okay. Managing no director worries. of Golden Garter. <laughs> Hello, I'm I'm Jean Bell. I was a regular visitor over the years to the Golden Garter in Livingstone. So many, many artists. Yes. You know, I'm here to remember the day, good old days of the Garter and all the top stars from around the world used to perform on a weekly basis. I also worked there for a short time as a waiter serving meals at tables. Right. Plenty of tips. Oh, loads of tips. Like, do, tip number one, don't eat yellow snow. That's the one. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm Dave McDonald and I was at the Golden Garter from 1969 to about 1971 with the Golden Garter Trio. And then we became the G-Set. It was a hell of a time. Uh, can you imagine one week we had Bruce Forsyth, the next week Tommy Cooper, Matt Munro, Shirley Bassey. It was a dream. And I was only 21 years of age and I was meeting all these people and learning the trade. And it was a fantastic time. It, it's a part of my life that I just cannot forget. You know, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Hi, my name's Roy Riley. Uh, I worked at the Garter for nine years from 1969 to 1978. Um, I had a wonderful time over the nine years I was there. Great place to work, some lovely people that I'm looking forward to meeting again. Hi, I'm Stephen Kelton. Uh, I'm here on the 7th of October in 2017, remembering the days of 7th of October 1968 when the Golden Art opened. I was a deputy general manager at that time and I uh, look forward to seeing a lot of old friends, uh, old work colleagues and some of the artists that were playing in those days. Hope you all have a great day. Uh, my name is Dave Buckley. I was the drummer with the Golden Garter Trio, G-Set as it became, uh, from 1969 to 1972. Happy years. This is Sheila Marie. Uh, I'm now Sheila Gott. Uh, I was there for seven years, probably, probably about 72, 73, with Pipe Dream, the small band, and then with the big band. Uh, I was the principal there. It was absolutely fabulous. Uh, who am I? 
My name's Mary Kearsa. Yes, I used to work at the Golden Garter. I was the Golden Garter girl. <laughs> oh, she used to call me my little name was Trouble. Trouble and Sweet. That's my name. But I'm very happy to be here in Seawall at this lovely reunion. My name is Pat Fallon. I worked for the Garter, the Golden Garter, for 14 years. I was a program attendant, front of house attendant. I went to the bars and I was bar manageress. And I've seen many, many acts. One of the best was Dave Allen, who gave me a large bottle of champagne. I took Diana Dawes' dress home to uh, alter it because it came away the scenes. Uh, I'm Barbara Donnelly, my brother's Barry and Paul um, worked on the door and my sister, and Alan, Alan Younger's brother and then my sister Maureen, she worked on the kiosk and she used to sell like Nucky Bear and chitlin' sticks and every, they all used to give her a bit of a tip but Ken Don never gave her a tip because he was that bloody mean <laughs> selling a million chitlin' sticks <laughs> My name is Kathy Donnelly and I worked at the Garter, the cloakroom, waitressing, doing everything. And um, when we was in the evening and Freddie Starr was on, we had to take him a cup of tea or whatever he wanted up the spiral staircase. But all those girls used to argue who was going to go up there because he was not very nice. And yet my cousin Barry Donnelly, who worked there, he was the spitting image of him and had the same sense of humour. And they got on absolutely brilliant. Uh, does anybody remember how much uh, a three-course meal was on the first week? No, it was ten and six for a three-course meal. To think that we could even go out for a night out uh, and you could have a three-course meal, you could have a dance, you could have a laugh, a bit of romance and see a top-line act. And, can we just put hands up with all those people that actually worked at Golden Garden? Well, as you went through the restaurant, I remember this girl in the front dropping, there was gambling or staying, and they went to under the tap. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that? <laughs> the first manager of the Golden Garden. Can anybody remember the first manager? No. No. There was a guy called Fred Stewart. Oh, yeah. And Fred Stewart was Very the well. uh, manager, the general manager of Dowell's Discotheque, which, which was the place where the Golden Garter started. And then a guy called John Forrester Green. And if you remember John Forrester Green, he was the one that sorted out the booking system because it was a nightmare when we first opened. And then the next manager, of course, was one of my favourites, in fact, the favourite, I think, which was a guy called Mike Robbins. Uh, then there was uh, Julian Brooke, and Julian Brooke came on board when Mike, Mike's uh, responsibility was broadened within the end time division, part of four days, and then Julian Brooke came along, and Julian Brooke was from the talk of the town of Leicester Square. Right, well, some years ago, uh, well, I don't know if anyone remembers the night of uh, Justice Springfield, and she at Bancor was not very happy with the way the sound was emanating from the room. So the house filled up on the first opening night, and uh, he was going, okay, just a drink of camera, so I was say, gave her a bit of a, a bit of a song, what have you, and she didn't like what was going on for some reason, and she walked off stage after, I think, 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, I, I was on the garden, Golden Garter Bar at the, at the back, I dashed forward and ran to this battle stage, and there was just a Springfield on the steps going onto stage and she was just coming off and there was Matt there, he's a tough lad, and he said, 
get back on that awful stage and earn your money. I thought, you can't speak to such people. And like, hey, she turned around and she went back on the stage. And I thought, well, blow me, that's how you deal with these people. <laughs> anyway, a few weeks later, I mean, this comedian came on stage and uh, he was telling a few jokes and they weren't going down very well at all. Anyway, after about 10, 15 minutes, he turned around and bugging off behind stage. So I, I thought, what's going on here? I didn't have to far to run this time, so I ran behind and back backstage. And there he is, just coming down the stairs. And I said, what are you doing? Get back on the stage. You know, and your money. He went, bang! <laughs> so I had stars in my eyes that night. <laughs> they had, of course, uh, had two musicians from the Golden Guard days on our uh, Golden Guard trio, which was... We... We've got some Shet's Bandu boys here, some of the original Shet's Bandu boys. Charlie here, and Howard Irvin. And I've not seen their Bandu boys here. That's a few stories, a few memories of the Golden Garter. I know we've got big ideas for next year, uh, so uh, let's hope everybody can get together and we can have a, a big party to celebrate the 50th anniversary of uh, the Golden Garter. Okay, well, thank you very much. I hope you have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.